it's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I'm going to talk about um, basically nice placeholder and bookmarking dashboards so the first one I'm going to start with and, and there's several of these out there I mean there's Homer there's Heimdall there's uh, dash machine there's uh, organizer there's just several and, and probably more than I'm listing right now so I'm going to kind of do these as separate videos because each one deserves its own install and its own time for how you set it up and using the settings and things like that so today I'm going to cover Homer. Um, this was just one that I've seen a lot of stuff on lately uh, online and in different reddits and things like that. And I thought okay I'll give it a shot and it's actually pretty nice. It's not too hard to get set up. It does take a little bit of effort um, initially but once you get going it's really not that bad. But you can see what I've got here. So this is kind of my setup right now. And the reason I thought well this would be great is because as I show you more and more things that you can self host that are open source especially you start to get a lot of different applications running and you start thinking okay now what was the address for that especially for running them locally on your on your network and you're and you're running them all on the same machine so you know the IP address where you're trying to remember okay what did I assign as the port number for that thing having a place to kind of set those up and just have them be static is really great so that you can just kind of come here and click or, or right click and, and then you can make this page your home page inside your browser so that every time you open a new tab this is what you get um, Right now, if I open a new tab, you see I do get some some favorites and things and some bookmarks that I've made more recently. But the problem is that these change depending on usage. I, I can't seem to set these in a static way. And maybe Firefox has that and I just don't know how to do it. But they, they seem to change based on usage and things like that. So having my own page that I've set up and, and is really clean would be great. And this is a nice clean look. It's it's really pretty pretty simple. There are no UI settings. So we'll get into how to set this up right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up and that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing is I always give you links in the show notes or the description. If I don't do show notes for some reason, they're also in the description. So just below the video, you can click and, and hit the little read more uh, link and you'll see all of the information, including timestamps. So don't forget about that. But today I'm going to start with the GitHub page for Homer. So this is where you can go out there and actually see the code and if you want to pull it down you can pull it down and run it yourself. You can modify it and contribute back. You can also uh, ask questions if you have issues. You can check out open issues to see if someone else is having the same issue you might be facing. And then you can add your information to it to make it easier for the developers to figure out uh, solutions. So. A lot of times people ask me questions on the comments and I do my absolute best to help you but sometimes you just ask me questions about things that I don't have any idea about. Um, I get questions about if I would contract to start up some of these services and sites for you guys and really I don't do contracting. I have a full time job on top of doing these YouTube videos. I just love open source software and I want to share my knowledge with you. So sometimes I'm going to tell you, you know, I don't know the answer or if you ask me about contracting I'm going to say no. Uh, but I'll, I'll just let you know that you can go out there and find people who will do contract work for you. Um, I'm showing you how to set these things up so that you can do it for yourself. And that's the whole idea behind this and behind open source is that you can do it for yourself. If you don't have time, almost every open source project that I show you has some kind of service that they offer where they will host it for you or help you set it up and manage it. Um, and, and it does cost a little bit of money, but if you're offering to pay me to contract anyways, then you're offering money right up front. So I assume that you're willing to go and pay that open source project to, to help you get that thing going. So go and ask. If you don't see it somewhere very obvious on their site, go and ask them if they're willing to help you do that. All right, moving forward, Homer um, is really a great dashboard program. It's, it, it's, again, very clean, very simple, very straightforward. There's quite a bit you can do with it. Uh, you saw mine had a little bit less on it, and that's just for screen real estate purposes for me. But you have options to put messages up here. You can put links up here in the uh, header bar and the menu bar, and you've got a customizable header bar um, up here as well. And then you've got color themes and things like that, but you have night mode, day mode, so it's pretty great. So this is the GitHub page, and, and they really give you a lot of information on how to get things set up, how to how to configure, you know, stuff like that. So this is a good reference when you're trying to figure out, like, okay, how do I set up my configuration file so that I get the things that I want 
to show up properly inside of that config. So they do have Docker instructions, which is great, and, and they're right here. Um, not hard to use, not hard to run at all. Um, and this is actually the Docker page I'm going to show you uh, on the next tab. So if you go to this Docker page, you can see again, they've got all of the GitHub information right here. Um, and they come down and they kind of talk about how to get started with it. And really, this is pretty much what you need in order to run this. Um, you don't need much else other than create a space because this is a placeholder right here. So create a folder or a directory that you're going to put all of the configuration and assets and stuff in uh, on your on your drive. And you're going to map that to what they say right here on the right side of the colon. And then, of course, um, the ports, as always, you can adjust the left side if you need a different port than what they say. Um, but leave the right side as it is. So you're mapping your host port to the container port. So basically, this is in the container. This is the port that the web service runs on. And on your host machine at that IP address, this is the port you would use to access the site. So it maps. It, it kind of does a port forward for you in the background from the host machine to the container. So the left side you can adjust. The right side you don't want to adjust. And the same thing with these volumes on the host you're creating a, a, a space for the configuration stuff in the container. This is what it's. This is the the directory, and here you're just mapping a, a host side directory to the container side. So you're getting again uh, information kind of shared through. Just think of it like a VM with a shared folder um, where you're accessing things on the VM side. It may look different, but in in the host, this is what it looks like. Finally, we're just telling it if you restart the machine or you restart or anything happens, then, then restart this thing. If it crashes, restart it for me so that it's back up and running and I don't have to worry about it. But if I have to, if I have to reboot my host after an update or something, it'll, it'll bring it automatically back up when you have restart equals always. You can also use Docker Compose. It's a fairly simple looking file. There's not really a lot to it. Um, but yeah, so you've got a lot of options down here that you can kind of go through and check out. And we're, we're just going to go over and kind of set this up. So I'll, I'll show you what I did. So I used Portainer just because it's so easy to actually get out here and do this. Um, so I've got basically three different Portainer instances that I can access here. And I've got this one running here. So if I go into my containers, you can see that I've got Homer right here running. And you can see that I've got the ports mapped. And actually, Portainer suggested a different port for me because 88 is a very common port. So it kind of set this up automatically for me um, from the template that I used. So I use the app templates. So if I go back um, and if we go down, we'll find Homer down here. And you'll see Heimdall and you'll see several others. Uh, but but here's Homer um, right here. So you just you can click into these things. You can see the settings and then there's always this advanced options so don't forget that you can click on that and here's where you can see the port mappings that they suggest so again you can see it's got a suggestion for a port mapping and then down here you can see the volume mappings that they suggest and it tells you which one is container and which one is host um, so be careful and make sure you know which one is which in this case i changed this i did not use the the default that they set they're making some assumptions about your directory structure um, so i changed it uh, but I did, I did use Pertainer to get this set up, and it was really, really easy and straightforward to do that. But we're going to go do this through the terminal in this case, so we're going to try to do it um, using the actual instructions off of their site. So I'm just going to do the docker run command they've got here. So I'm just going to highlight that and copy it. And then I'm going to open up my terminal. And this is my configuration file, but we'll go through this in, in just a minute. All right, so we're on my server where I run another Docker instance, and I'm basically just going to go ahead and say I need to make a directory called Homer. It's just a very simple directory, all lowercase. And then I'm just going to do an ls, and I should see that directory here somewhere. There it is right there. So I've got my directory. Great. I'll clear this out. Now I'm going to paste in that Docker run command. I'm just going to hit the space bar. I'm going to do control C, and then I'm going to clear that. And I'm just going to up arrow back so that I get back to this. The only thing I need is this last line right here. So I'm just going to copy that line with no extra spaces because that's the name of the image file. And I'm just going to paste it in with Control Shift V like Victor. So that just gives me the latest version of this image. And I've got restart equals always. And you can adjust the spacing if you need to. And then we've got this path. So for me, my path is not that. So I'm going to say slash home slash Brian slash Homer. And then it had some other stuff in it. Let's see. Um, so we'll do slash 
config slash homer slash assets. So that should work. Um, this is going to match up what I have on the other machine. So we've got slash home slash your username. This should not be Brian unless your name is Brian and your machine is set up with your user as Brian. You should use your username right here. Then we're going to put Homer all lowercase, then slash config with a capital C, slash Homer with a capital H, and then slash assets all lowercase. And then a colon should have slash www slash assets. Okay, that's, a, that's all you have to do for mapping that. And then you've got your, your volume mapping label there. Then we've got our port. So 8080 is a very common port. So on the left side, we're going to change this to a port that's not in use on our host right now. And I don't believe 8095 is in use on my on my host, so I'm going to use that number. You can use any number you want, um, you know, as long as it's within the port range, uh, you know, which is up to like 65, 232 or something. I don't remember what it is. It's it's a lot. So you've got 65,000 port range basically. You can use any port. Just make sure that if you're already using 8080, you don't try to use that one on the left side. The right side you don't mess with. This is the container and this is where the container expects the web server to be running. This side is your host and that's the one you can change and map to the container. So if we go through the command real quick, it's docker run dash D, which means run it as a daemon. So run it in the background after the command runs. Don't stop the container from running unless I stop it. Map this port 8095 to port 8080 in the container. Map this volume, which is my home directory and all the stuff we just set up to www slash assets in the container and then restart always which means if it crashes or if I if I stop it to reboot the machine or if I just reboot the machine for some reason just restart it when it comes back up and then this is the name of the image we're going to use and grab the latest possible version so that's really all we need in order to get Homer kind of started so let's just hit enter this should go out and pull down the image from uh, docker hub and then it's going to get it started and there you go it's running so you can check the logs if you don't have portainer you can check the logs by doing docker logs and then the name that you just gave to this particular thing and we're going to add one more value here which is dash dash name equals um, homer i think that's the correct syntax we'll find out here in just a minute uh, let's hit enter there we go now if we do docker ps we should see homer in the list here um, yeah here's homer yeah so it gave it the name homer now which is great so we've got everything running the way that we want we'll clear that out now we can do docker and then logs and then the name of our container so this is it it didn't give us any errors but there we go that's a good sign if you don't have any errors we're probably set and running so now we set that on 8095 for our port. So we're going to go open up that machine. And there it is. So here's our, our default Homer dashboard. This is what it looks like when you first install it and get it running. And you can see it's just got a bunch of placeholder information, but it shows you kind of what's possible. Now, one of the things I'll say is these icons, they're not all installed every single icon you want so you do have to go out and kind of get the icons that you want but we'll go through that here in just a minute so first we're going to open up that location on our main drive so we created the the, the folder called homer so we're going to do cd homer and then we created a config with a capital c and then a homer with a capital h and then assets Okay, so we're going to get into that directory just by doing cd homer slash capital C config slash capital H homer slash assets. And then we'll do an ls to see what's in that particular directory. And right here is this config.yaml. So we can, this is the one that we want to edit to make changes to that live page that we're seeing in the background. You'll see there's additional page.yaml and then there's config.yaml.dist.sample.sui. So, so there's quite a bit of stuff here that you can check out, but we're going to focus on this one just to get everything kind of set up and running. Now you have two different folders. You have icons and you have tools. So if we go ls tools, you'll see here there's a couple of different uh, PNGs and they're, they're just called sample and sample2. And if we do ls icons, you'll see there's a few icons in here. So they've got 
the maskable icon, the Safari pinned tab icon. So, so they've got a few different little icons here. So you can kind of pick where you want to put those different uh, looking uh, things. Whether you want to put these images in tools or whether you want to put these images in icons, it doesn't matter if you want to create a new directory, you can do that. Uh, but you do need to use sudo privileges for this. So when you start these things up, uh, Docker kind of runs them and it has to have a root privilege. So if I want to make any changes, I have to use sudo. So let's first, before we do anything with icons, let's just check out our config.yaml. So we're going to do sudo nano config.yaml. And then you got to put in your super user password. And you can see here kind of what it looks like. So he starts off, he's got home page configuration. So here's your title for the main title on the page. And if you just kind of click uh, back in the background, you can see it says demo dashboard, demo dashboard. So if I change this, I can make this say whatever I want. So I can make this say open source is awesome, which it is. Now we can save, but we have a subtitle. So you see where it says Homer right above that. So we can actually change this to say O S I A, or we could make this even shorter and or a little bit better, and we can make this say O S I A, and this open source is awesome. So you can kind of change it around. It's, there's no set way to do this. And you can see here they've got this optional icon. I don't know what happens if we do it, but let's take this out and we'll just see what it looks like. To save, we're going to do Control O and hit Enter. We're going to leave it open. We're just going to go back here. We're going to hit refresh. So now you see there's the icon. There's the logo. There's open source is awesome. There's our there's our new title. So we've just updated this page a little bit. And we're just kind of using the stuff that they have in place. So I don't like that icon. I'm just going to comment that back out. That means just put the hashtag, the pound sign, the number sign, whatever you know it as. Put it out there in front of that line. And that comments it out. We'll just save that change real quick. So it says, do you want a header? If you don't want a header, just make this false so we're going to make it false real quick and we'll save it we're going to hit enter and we're just going to see what that does so we're going to hit refresh and you see what happens my title bar went away i've got more vertical screen real estate which maybe that's what you want maybe you don't want that title bar there if you have a lot of different links like these that you want down here you can get rid of that title bar by changing that to false so i'll put it back to true for now and we'll save it so the footer, that's down at the very bottom. So this says created with, and then it you know has a few different things, and it says love, and it says here's what they used to make this. So if you want to get rid of that footer, you can just basically comment out that line. Um, I don't mind the footer. It doesn't take up that much space. But if you had to get rid of it, you would just put another hashtag out in front of this line that says footer right here, just like that, and then save, and your footer will go away. So here you have optional theme customizations. I'm not really going to mess with the theme right now, but you can see the highlight primary, highlight secondary. These are colors. These are hex colors. So if you don't know what the hex colors are, it's very easy. Just open up a, a search page for Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever and just look up hex color palette. And even if you spell it wrong, you're going to get something like this where you can go to the HTML hex color codes and you can pick the colors you like. So let's just say that I want kind of a nice... Let's just say I want a bright color like this. Let's go right there. And then I can go down and this thing's gonna tell me what the color codes are. And you can see right here, here's the hex color code. So you can just take that, copy it and paste it in there and you're gonna change one of those colors. And as you go, you can change all your colors around and you can move this thing around and figure out what colors you like. And then you can go here and find a color you like. So you can just jump around on these kind of tools that they have out there online for free and pick all your hex color codes and make it look however you want so you can theme that that page any way that you want to okay so if you don't like their their theme you can change it now just note over here on the right real quick this looks like a menu this is not configuration this changes the layout so look here you have two items it sets them side by side instead of stacked and what happens is you get horizontal rows with vertical groupings um, or you can click again and it goes back to the way it was this is your color. So daytime, nighttime, and then this is, I'll switch based on your, your system theme. I'll follow your system theme. Okay, so daytime, nighttime, 
and then that half and half is system theme. Okay, so we'll just leave it on system theme for now. These links up here you can also adjust. So let's uh, let's refresh here. There we go. We've got our header back. You can adjust these links, or you can take them out completely. So we'll go back and look at our text. Um, so we're just going to go down. So this is where you adjust all your colors for your light and your dark themes. And then you've got this thing that's called message. So that's this right here. And you've got style. You've got the title. You see it says demo with an exclamation point. And then you've got this, uh, whatever this little icon is. And then this is a demo homepage. So if you don't like all of this stuff, you can just take it out or you can comment it out. It's up to you how you do it. But if you don't want it there, and I don't because it takes up vertical screen real estate that I don't need. But if you're sharing this with other people, maybe you want to put a message that tells them, hey, today is such and such day. Don't forget. There you go. That's how you do it. So if we save this again, we can refresh. And now that's gone. I've got some vertical real estate for more links. Okay. So you've got lots of ways to get vertical real estate back. It's really not hard and it's actually very nice to be able to do that. So now we're going to get down here into kind of where we see like our, um, so these are the links in the, in the message bar. So you see it says contribute. So you can just follow this down and see exactly where these are. But you need to understand this is a YAML file, Y-A-M-L or Y-M-L. You need to know that spacing is very important. So it's two spaces, you know, two spaces, two spaces. So you need to make sure that you use spaces and not tabs and that it's it's lined up correctly or else whenever you try to run it, you're going to get an error on the screen and it's going to tell you something's wrong with the YAML file it's trying to read. So just be aware of that. Okay. Now, this is telling you kind of how to set up the page. That's why it's a demo page. So just, just be aware that you don't have to have all of this stuff. You can get rid of the, the, the menu bar completely or get rid of all the links in the menu bar. Um, you don't have to have it there. So just, just know that. So if you want to get rid of the links, again, now there's probably a faster way to do this than what I'm doing. And I like to put an extra one in front of the comments whenever I'm going all the way down so that I can tell which one is a comment and which one isn't. Um, it just saves me from messing up my comments. So I've got all those taken out. So let's just save it and then let's go refresh and you'll see kind of what it does. So now those links are gone, but I've still got my controls over here on the end. So again, just making simple adjustments. And then finally, you've got your main buttons down here. So this is kind of the, the bread and butter of Homer. So this is a grouping. So this is the group. So applications. Here's the icon for the cloud. And then you list these things as items. So it's important that you set this up correctly. And once you set items, you, you go in two spaces and set your first name of your item, which is awesome app right here. And then you put in the information that is required for those items. Now, this target item isn't specifically special, I don't think. Um, let's see if I just click. Yeah, it tries to go on the same page. I don't think it opened a new tab. Yeah, it did open a new tab. Great. So that tells it open up a new tab, apparently. Um, let's see if the other one has it. Let's just look at our code here. And this one doesn't have the target uh, item. So let's try. Yeah, so this isn't going to go anywhere, but I think it would open up in the same tab. So basically, again, if you set this as your shortcut page, just click and let it open. But if you wanted to open in new tabs, you would want to put that little target blank item and it will open it in a new tab. So just worth noting. So these aren't useful to us because they don't give us anything that we want to see. But I want to set up something that takes me somewhere useful. So if I say show notes, I can go here and I can actually put in, I'm going to say that this is going to be ghost.png because that's the the uh, item that I'm going to get and that's what I'm going to name it for the icon for the ghost blog and then it gives you this subtitle so subtitles can be really useful and I'm going to call this o o s i a show oops show notes blog okay now this is called just tags so whenever you're back here and you hover you see how it says app you can basically make that tag say whatever you want it to say. In this case, it's not really an app, it's a site. So I'll just call that site. All it does is give you another level of uh, categorization. This is not 
the right uh, place. So we're going to go to show notes dot open source is awesome dot com. And then we'll leave that. Now, this one I want to go to OSIA discussion. And this one I'm going to make rocket chat. And this is something like that. And again, this is site. And URL is https colon slash slash. And that's discuss.opensourceisawesome.com. And then we will put uh, for the target. This is important. Spaces target and we'll do again blank just so it opens up in the background make sure you have an extra line at the end hit control o to, to save and then we're going to do refresh and there we go so now you see i don't have the icons yet where i said they would be so it gives you this empty looking thing that's you just need to get the files and put them where you said they were going to be so if we want those files we can again go into just a search and i can say I want a ghost blog logo PNG. Uh, PNGs are better because they support transparency and they usually look a little nicer. Once you get Google or DuckDuckGo, they should have an images option up here at the top. And then you're just looking for something that looks like a nice clean logo. Um, this one here might be good. We can You can click on it to kind of see. Don't be fooled if it shows you this little grid in the background here. It, it's That's part of the picture. You're going to have to deal with it if you open it. Um, sometimes I have to refresh these pages. They won't open for some reason. There we go. So this one has transparency in the background. It's a dark color. I'm just going to do save image as and check and make sure it's a PNG, which it is. And I'm going to name it ghost now this is coming to my local machine I'll have to move it over to that machine here in just a minute but that's okay I'm just gonna save it and I'm gonna save it in pictures which is massively full uh, but I called it ghost.png there we go the other one I need right now is rocket chat so I just change ghost blog to rocket chat and then find the logo that looks good to you. Make sure it's got transparency and then click on the image part. Save image as. And again in pictures, rocket, chat, and we'll just save. There we go. Now, when you want to move these things over, you can do that through the terminal. So I'm going to open up a new terminal window. I'm going to use control shift and N like new. And I'm going to make that a little larger. CD pictures. And I'm going to do SCP. Now, you don't have to do these one at a time, but I've only got two, so it's fine. I'm going to secure copy rocketchat.png to brian at 192.168.7.125 colon tilde slash means put it in my home directory. Okay, this is fine just to start to move it from one machine to the other. And it's done. Now, I'm going to do the same thing with the ghost PNG. If you want to do this in a different way, um, you could put these into a separate folder where they're all together. Um, and then you would do scp-r and then the name of the folder. So my logos and then to your other machine, something like this. This would move that entire folder called my logos if you had one that had all your logo images in it over to your other machine. And then you could work with that folder instead of having to work with each file. Um, so I'm going to clear that. So now those are all over here. So I'm just going to jump out of this uh, editing folder here. I'm going to do CD. I'm going to do LS. And you should see ghost. If I look in the right place. Yeah, ghost.png. And then we should have rocketchat.png over here. We do. So in this case, I need to do sudo. Uh, CP or MV. We can move it. Ghost.png to slash homer config oop, not home not slash either to homer config homer assets and i'm going to put this in tools because i believe that's where it said it was looking and then i'm going to do the same thing for the rocket chat png 
There we go. Make sure you spell it correctly, and we're done. So now if we go back to our setup and we refresh, there we go. Now we've got our icon showing up and it's looking a little bit cleaner and it should open in a new tab and it does and show notes comes up. Excellent. And then if we click on rocket chat, it should bring us to the login page or the sign up page. Unless I'm already signed in and it's got my session saved. Let's see. It is trying to load. That's a good sign. Yeah, so it doesn't have me it doesn't have me logged in, but it brings you to this page where you can then go and sign in or sign up, depending on what you need to do. So great. So this is a, this is a good start. This is Homer. Now, I want to add a couple more things. Let's add another category, and then let's add a link under that category. So we're going to go back to our terminal, and we're going to go back into. We can just do sudo nano Homer slash config. You don't have to cd into it if you don't want to. Homer assets and then config.yaml so we're back in our config just remember to use sudo or else you're not going to be able to save your work okay so if we go up here and look we can just copy so if we highlight and copy and actually copy an entire first section as well it'll save you a little bit of work so you can do right click and copy from the menu or you can use control shift c so it tells you what the shortcut is we can go down here and then we can do control shift V or we can right click and paste and you see we get it now we have to fix the spacing right here so we need to go up and and, and space two times okay you need to do that now this is going to be called applications again we don't want it applications let's call this one I don't know uh, remote services and then let's so this one would really be better with the cloud icon that's fine just make sure you have your quotes make sure everything's correct and in the right place and let's call this um, remotely now we're going to change this to the remotely icon and this is going to be remote support web app and that we'll call app and then here we put in the correct URL for that. And blank. Yeah, that's good. So now this is going to create a new section. So we'll just save and we'll test it and make sure we didn't mess anything up except for not having the icon. Perfect. So now we've got two different columns and we've got different things under those columns and we're grouping them now the icon here you can go and change find icons that fit what you want this is still called applications it's really not we could call this sites or whatever we want but again remote services and then we've got remotely and then I could put mesh central and I could put other things that I might be running that I'm using you know, guacamole or whatever else you're running to get remote access to your machines you can you can title these whatever you want you can use the icons that you want you can go find their logos and put the correct logos in the correct places so you really get a lot of control over what Homer looks like and how it works and again if we click on this little button here it just switches the way it lays out so depending on what you like and what you prefer you can have it lay out however you want and then zooming makes a difference so currently I've got it at 120 percent to make it a little bit more visible especially if you're watching on a phone but if I put this back to 100 you can see you're gonna get a lot more vertical real estate and a lot more screen to work with so if I set it this way you know you could probably fit oh six or eight applications in a column and you can actually get three columns and once you do a fourth group it will come back over under the first column and create a new group in that column so the layout's pretty automatic it's pretty great I like it and I think if you resize to a phone so if we go control shift I and we set this to our mobile device so that's an iPad I believe we can go set this to a phone uh, let's try an iPhone 6 yeah see so it, it lays out very cleanly and it moves things into a way that makes sense so if you're trying to access stuff from your phones you can do this as well and again set this up as a page you can access easily set it up as your home page whatever works to get this done but there you go that's Homer it's a really kind of clean nice looking dashboard and it makes it easy to set up all the pages that you want to access very quickly and very easily from a single location so this is the one that I've been working with 
you can kind of see my groupings here. So I've got my data analysis pages. I've got my remote management pages. I've got my downloading pages here. And then I've got my open sources awesome pages. I've still got several more pages that I actually need to set up for this. But this is a great start. I really like Homer. It's pretty great. Uh, I will be doing some other ones and checking them out and testing them out to see how they work. Very quickly, I am editing and getting everything ready for the collaboration that I did recently with Ibracorp. Um, it was a great session, and we actually talked about installing these three applications here, and actually four. There's an extra one that I haven't listed yet. Uh, but this is a really great setup, and in the meantime, I've learned how to, how to run all this stuff through a VPN that's also running in Docker. So I'll kind of go through that as well, but it's an exciting way to kind of run things if you want to do some downloading and stuff like that. I hope you guys will enjoy it. I hope you're looking forward to it. I'm editing it all up right now, but everything seems to have turned out really great on the video. And again, uh, Ibracorp over there, great channel, great person, great great content. So go check it out. Um, I think you'll really enjoy it. And I'm looking forward to our next collab. He's getting ready, and we're going to have another session where I'm going to try to go through some things with him as well. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time. Oh, <laughs>